Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 19 of Linux CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll be talking about the end of life status of Debian 7, codenamed Wheezy, and some options that you have going forward. I wish to remind all of you that I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience using Linux CNC, formerly known as EMC2, as a controller and CNC controlled machines for this home shop. I'm hoping that as I release videos over time that other home hobbyists can use the information to make their own CNC controlled machines. With some luck, perhaps these videos will remove some of the mystery behind the Linux CNC controller and help some of the people avoid issues that I've encountered while learning how to use it. With that out of the way, let's get started. So why is Debian Wheezy version 7 still being used? Well before I get into the options of continuing to use Wheezy or using something else, I think it's worthwhile to talk just a moment about why Debian Wheezy is still being used. If you've watched my video on compiling a real-time kernel for Linux CNC, then you'll have a clear understanding of what I am saying, so forgive me for reiterating some of the stuff for you that, already, that you already know. For the rest of you, here's the rundown. Linux CNC requires a real-time operating system to work. A real-time operating system is achieved in one of three ways under Linux. These are RTAI, RT Preempt, and Zenimai. And of these three real-time kernels, only two are heavily used for Linux CNC, these being RTAI and RT Preempt. Now, there are differences between these two that may be the basis for determining which to use. RTAI gives less real-time latency as compared to RT Preempt, particularly on older hardware. This lower latency allows us to use software step generators. These software step generators are required if you're using computer's parallel port as the main I.O. for your machine. This condition fits the vast majority of home hobbyist machines. Now, on the other hand, if you're using hardware that has built-in step generators, such as the Mesa cards, then the higher latency of using the RT preempt kernel doesn't matter as much because Linux CNC will send the information to the hardware and the hardware will generate the required pulses alleviating the work from the computer. Now that you're armed with this tidbit of information, we ask the question, why is Linux CNC using such an old version of Linux? To answer this question is twofold. First, recall the vast majority of home hobbyist machines use the parallel port. Because of this large user base, the developers of Linux CNC find it important that the project use the RTAI kernel for real-time operations. The crux of the problem resolves, revolves around the RTAI kernel patches. Second, these patches just like the RT preempt patches are released for specific kernel versions. But unlike the, the uh, RT preempt patches, these are only released for a few kernel versions. The developers have not been able to compi a, a compile a newer RTAI kernel that they feel is stable enough for the general population to use. If you are unable to compile a stable kernel based on a newer kernel, then you're stuck with what works. In this case, kernel version 3.4, which runs on Debian Wheezy. Because of this RTAI kernel problem, we find ourselves in a rather unique situation. Debian has discontinued support for Wheezy. This simply means that there will be no new software or security updates for Wheezy going forward into the future. This is the reason that you get the nasty little message about software repositories not being available. So at this juncture, you have to make an active decision about what to do, and this decision will be determined by which team you're on, Team A or Team B. Let's flesh these teams out. Team A is the group of people who feel like the software is used to run a machine, and it does not matter if the base operating system is not supported anymore, as long as it continues to run and operate their machine. The only issue that may arrive for this group is that there seems to be no existing software that can be installed since the repositories are down. The good news for this team is that 
there's a workaround for this problem for the foreseeable future. Team B is the group of people who feel like security is as important as it is for the machine to run. These folks may have the machine controller attached to the network that is shared with others or on the internet. They tend to copy files to and from the machine controller using the network rather than using a flash drive over the sneaker net. It is because of the vulnerabilities of the network that they feel it's important to have a secure and updated operating system. Fortunately, this camp has a couple options available as well. Now, I won't be advocating for either Team A or Team B, but instead, I'll show you what you can do to move forward with Linux CNC. Team A. I'm sticking with what works. If you're in the Team A camp and just want to use the operating system to run your machine, then you have nothing to do. Well, that's unless you'd like to install some software on the computer at some point, or if you're following the tutorials that I've released and then need to do some updates and install some of the software that I've outlined in them. In this case, we have a little work to do. Unfortunately, the software repository that Weezy used are no longer available, but on an upside, these repositories have been moved to archives and they can be accessed by DeviantWeezy. To fix our problem, we only need to adjust the repository source list file and we're good to go. I'll show you shortly how to do this, but do keep in mind that while the software will be available for you to download and install again, there are no security updates and the system will squawk at you if they are enabled. Let's break away from the slides for a minute and I'll show you how to change things on the repository sources. Okay, so what I have here is a vanilla install of Debian Wheezy running uh, Linux CNC uh, 2.7. And when I installed it, uh, you know, the OS did inform me that the repositories weren't available. And as a result, it would uh, comment out the, uh, secure, uh, the security updates um, repository. Uh, but uh, as an aside, though, I did notice that when I logged in, um, there's this little icon in the corner. It kind of looks like a splat or maybe a gear or something. I don't know. Uh, that notifies me that there are five updates available. So when I click on this and enter in my password, the updates that are available uh, are third-party updates, and they all happen to be from Linux CNC. So we have the main Linux CNC software, the dev um, development files, the documentation, the uh, configuration utility for Mesa, or, or Mesa, however you say it, and uh, the true type font tracer software. So it's nice to know that even though the uh, operating system isn't providing any updates that at least Linux CNC continues to update itself. So that's good. But that doesn't solve our problem. Our problem is that uh, if we wanted to install software we can't. And as an example here if I say hey, uh, let's uh, uh, apt get install and let's say I want uh, gedit. Say that's my favorite editor and I want it, right? Put in my password. And it says, oh, I can't, on the, I, I can't find the, the package. So as a matter of fact, if we do a sudo apt-get update, so if I can type it right, we see that we hit some, and then we get a bunch of errors, right? And so that's that's what we want to take care of. So uh, what we're trying to get here are, uh, you know, packages uh, from the repositories. Now there are two places or two ways that we can uh, take care of this. Okay, uh, one is we can go to applications, and then we can go to System and Synaptic Package Manager. Right, that's going to ask for our password because we're potentially changing the system. Okay, and then we're going to go to Settings repositories okay and over here under other software we see all the repositories uh, are, or and additional repositories that have been uh, added here so we see that there's the build bot Linux CNC these are unchecked you would use these here in case you want to do um, use a different version of Linux CNC we'll go into build bot sometime but here we have the main Linux CNC wheezy um, uh, repositories and then up here these first four that we see are the uh, regular Debian repositories. So the first two are the actual 
Now this is uh, what it checks to go get files. So if I want to install um, gedit, it would it would check the Debian Wheezy. It would check this repository, right? Now the the Wheezy updates repository. So it, as you look at um, oh here I'll just show you real quick. If we are curious about what version of of Debian we have, we can say uh, lsb underscore uh, release right minus a and we see here that well we're running uh, the distributors Debian and it's a uh, it's Debian GNU Linux 7.9 codenamed Wheezy right so release 7.9 well the newest release would be 7.11 so those releases right are um, like to 7.10 and to 7.11 those are the ones that are stored in Wheezy updates, and then they move over to Wheezy. So the newest possible, um, the newest possible version of the software is going to be in this repository right here. Okay, so this means nothing to us, you know, because th there are no more updates, right? So we would simply just uncheck those, right? Uh, we obviously want to keep LinuxCNC.org. So these up here, we have to change the. Uh, path to the archive path right and so to do that we just highlight one and we're going to say edit it right and instead of being http.debian.net we're going to go to archive a r c h i v e dot debian dot org right and just say okay and then we're going to see so you see that we've changed it here to archive debian.org and this is for the source code right and we're going to do it for the binary stuff as well. So we're going to say edit, right? And this is archive, A R C H I V E, dot debian dot org. Okay. And we say OK. And we see that that's changed. And then all we have to do is hit close and then uh, update the repositories, and we're good. But I'm actually going to revert this back to the way it was. So you see that it's we've checked that and put that back to where it was. And we will um, go and, and modify these another way. So I'm going I'm to close this. Okay. So the repository uh, list of repositories are actually in a file called um, uh, source sources or source dot list, right? So if we're going to change, we'll change the directory to Etsy apt apt, right? And we'll do a listing, and we see sources dot list. That that's where those entries are are stored. So if we were to cat sources right dot list, we see there's there's the list. Okay. So we're going to edit this, and I'm going to use a nano nano. Uh, you know it's a system file, so I'll have to uh, sudo nano, and then the file that I want to edit is sources dot list. Okay. So now we're in here. So remember, they're the same files we see up here. We have the main binary files, right? And then these are the source code, right, for the source. And then these here are the updates, right? And then here we see two that we didn't see before. And you notice that we're not seeing the Linux CNC ones. So these are the main um, main files. So let me... Uh, Let's go in here and we'll change this one. Remember, this is this should be um, archive debian.org. It's like that. And same way with this one, it should be archive .org. Okay. All right. So that uh, that takes care of. Uh, the main software so this this will allow us to download software and uh, uh, and update to whatever the most current is at the time of archival okay and again you know the uh, the the wheezy dash updates this is where they would stage files uh, to, to move from let's say 7.9 uh, uh, to 7.10 to 7.11 all just incremental versions of uh, DB and wheezy um, those are of no use to us. So uh, in Linux, a lot of times you know you'll use a hashtag or something that's called an octothorpe or pound sign um, as a comment. So you notice that those have uh, changed 
color to blue indicating that it's a comment. Now let's look at these uh, this last two uh, lines here. This is security.debian.org and then you know Wheezy updates, right? Now these is these are security updates, but remember we're into life. We are not going to get any security updates. And if we don't do anything with these, when we do an update, we'll discover that you know uh, Debian is just going to gripe about it. So we're going to comment these out because obviously they're not any of any use to us. Okay. All right. So with that out of the way, um, we can save the file. So I'm going to hit Control X to exit, and it wants to know if I want to save the modified buffer. Yes, I do. So I'll hit Y. And wants to know if I what file I want to write to, and it's got the default file that I edited, sources.list. So I'm just going to hit enter. Okay. So now if I cat that file again, sources, right, dot list, we see that uh, uh here, let me clear the screen so it's not so garbled. Uh we'll see there's our two files up here that we edited, right? And then here here are the next four we commented out. So we're good. So now we can sudo apt dash get update. Okay, and so we're seeing a number of hits and the ignores you can, yeah, it's nothing consequential to us. So it's going through and grabbing the uh, the headers and, and comparing to what's uh, out there in the archive that's newer than what we actually have on the machine. And we can um, uh, seems to think, oh, I know why. I left D package open up here. See that? So let me exit out of that. So, all right. So anyway, um, let's, uh, let's run this again. Update. It's going to go out there, reads it. And read the package list okay so it's done so now we can do an up update right sudo apt dash get update i mean i'm sorry upgrade and it tells us that there's quite a bit of so you see there's quite a bit of software here that's available for upgrade now i'm not going to sit here and do this um for sake of video but now if i wanted to uh, remember earlier I tried to install gedit and I couldn't so I'm going to do sudo apt dash get install gedit now you notice that it finds all the files that I need to install to install gedit and and uh, so if I hit yes here it, it install and and uh, well, we'll try it if it doesn't take too long I'll, I'll shorten this section down Okay, so uh, all the uh, software is installed. Now if I type gedit, it should fire it off, and there it is. So there's uh, the gedit document editor, and we can use it, and so we can install software. So for those of you that have been following along in uh, my tutorials, and there's some software that I suggested that you install or try to install, uh, you know, stress test the machine and that sort of stuff, at least it's now available to you again. For those, you know, in TMA who says, hey, look, I, I don't care that I'm not getting security updates. It's just running my machine, and that's where I'm going to leave it. All right, so uh, that pretty much concludes that. Let's get back to the slides, and let's uh, talk about Team B. Team B, I need something still supported. If you're in the Team B camp, then an actively supported operating system is important to you. So let's discuss the two options that are available to us. The first option is to go to the download section of linuxcnc.org and take a look. Here you'll see that Debian version 9, codenamed Stretch, is available for download. Now, Debian Stretch is set to go end of life sometime in 2022, so this gives us a couple more years of support for this release of Debian, at least from the time of this recording. However, before you decide to go to this route, let's take a close look you'll notice that Stretch has been built with the preempt RT real-time kernel patches. Now if you're using Mesa cards or some other hardware that does the stepping for you, this might not matter at all. But if you're on a machine that uses software stepping because you're using the parallel port to control your machine, well, then maybe it does. The upside to this is that there's little difference with newer hardware. My advice is to install it do some testing like we done for Wheezy, and if the numbers are okay, then you're good to go. 
Now if you plan on doing this with a computer that currently runs your machine, I highly, highly recommend pulling your hard disk and replacing it with a different hard disk. This way, if things go south, you can always put your original hard disk back in and you're back in business. The second option is to roll your own real-time system with a Linux operating system of your choice. I've showed how to, this can be done using Lubuntu 18.04 in episode 17 titled Compiling a Real-Time Kernel for Linux CNC. In that tutorial, I compile a real-time kernel using the preempt RT kernel patches. This will give you the solution very similar to Debian Stretch. You'll want to test it. Now, if you go that route, you have the option of downloading Linux CNC devs to run in uSpace, or you can compile Linux CNC yourself. If you elect to compile Linux CNC yourself, I have a tutorial that will guide you along. See episode 18, titled Compiling Linux CNC from Source Code. So with the end of life for Debian 7, or Wheezy as it's called, you basically only have two choices. Either you modify Wheezy so you can still use it by editing the repository lists, or you move to a newer operating system that has support and potentially lose some performance by using the preempt RT kernel patches instead of the RTAI kernel. Again, I feel I need to tell you, on modern hardware, the difference is not likely to matter. So where do you go from here? Well, the simple answer is you pick a team either A or B, and keep on keeping on. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is a fun and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking of getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.